Twisted aliens and demented cultists battle across the devastating science fiction world of Dark Age. Master your forces and learn to survive at beastsofwar.com. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a warcaster. Take control of the mighty jacks, arcane devices, and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hey everybody, so I am joined in the studio today with Gianna. We are going Ooh. to have a look at some piratey goodness. Arr. Arr. So um, we're going to have a look at British versus Pirates Volume 2. It is on Kickstarter right now. Mm -hmm. This is by Apollo Randall. You may remember probably a little over a year ago, we had the first round of the game on Kickstarter. And this is its own standalone expansion. So you can play it as is, as its own game, or you can use it combined with your first volume. Um, to do bigger ship battles. So I wanted to take you guys through um, some of what you get in the box. So you get a feel for what you're actually going to get to play with. Um, you know, pirate anything automatically gets my attention. Of course. But the artwork in this, uh, the ships, the cards, everything, it's just, it's beautiful. I mean, like you just, you see it and you have to have it. So I figure we're going to take a look. Um, we'll start with ships. We'll We'll go over a few of the things that are I'm gonna say the same as from the first Kickstarter. They're not exactly the same things. They are different ships, different artwork, right. um, but the same mechanics that you'll find in the first one. So first, we're gonna take a look at these ship cards. They are gorgeous. They're very large size cards. Um, so if we have a look in the middle here, we're gonna start with the pirates because you know, hey, it's pirates. Let me see if I can straighten Arr. that a little bit. R, right? So um, important to note here, this is a medium ship. For the pirates, this is the largest that their ships come. Um, this is only important in that um, the French in this game have a little bit of an advantage with having access to some bigger ships, but mm -hmm. the pirates make up for it in um, devious little maneuvers and tricks that they can do along the way. And they seem to forever have better morale than, <laughs> than the French. So the we have, you have nothing to lose. Exactly. So um, we'll take a look at another medium ship here. Just look at how beautiful these cards are. Like, I just want to go and sail the seven seas with these guys. And so you'll see here, this is the way um, the wind affects uh, your ship's movement on here. And you'll populate each of these cards with six-sided dice. And that's how you change um, as you take damage to different portions of uh, your ship. This is an example of a small ship um, for the pirates. And the small ships are the ones that um, get you around on the board the fastest. So Now, are these new ships? Are these same ones? They're, by the size of the ship, they're the same, but they are different ships than what you had in the first. The, okay. the variety of ships, so there's a sloop, there's a light Zebic, Zebic, somebody correct me however I'm saying that wrong. Um, and then the medium-sized ships are usually frigates. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the French actually have huge ships, which the pirates do not have. So let's take a look at some examples of the French ships. So this is an example of a huge ship for the French. Just look at that. Could you imagine seeing that coming at you on the, on the seas? Hey. I know. Run it. You're pirates. You're not scared, no. right? We have a Let's Play coming up pretty soon. Gianna was pirates and that, so that's why you can tell she has a little disdain for the French here. Um, this is another example of a huge ship. And I'll show you in just a few minutes um, the way the models look a little bit different. They are copies of the same type of models per the size of the ship. Uh -huh. um, but you know, as you, can, as you paint them up, you be able to do it in a way that you can distinguish which is which. It did get a little tricky. You had a hard time um, when you were playing two ships of the same size in that, trying to remember. So that's where it's going to become really important really for you. It really was confusing. I was just being a pirate. It was, it was confusing. It was not, well, it was confusing and convenient. That's the word we're looking for True for that. her. Um, this is an example of a medium ship for the pirates. I, like I said, I just love this artwork. I swear I could look at these cards forever. Do so you want to do a quick highlight of what each box, you already went over that, but then you have... The other one in the other corner, that's the pivot. Oh yes, this this is how you pivot on the card. And then um, this box here tells you all about how your firing works. Um, you have both the amount of dice, uh, top column is the amount of dice that you would get to roll based upon the distance that you're gonna be firing at. Bottom is accuracy, which means 
you're automatically going to be in, able to increase your roll by plus whatever that number is. Mm -hmm. So, and this is where you can tell the difference between your small ships and your large ships because they're going to be more successful or less successful at different distances. And this is another example of a small, just gorgeous. I like the size of these cards and I love the fact that you um, keep track of your damage on, on the six-sided dice. Yeah. It's nice and easy. It's tidy bookkeeping. It and I think um, it's really approachable. This is the kind of game that is great for a seasoned gamer um, because there's plenty of compl complexity and strategy into what you're going to have to do. But I don't think it's off the table for a potentially new gamer. You know, like yeah. I, you could you could gladly teach um, kids how to play this. I, I think it's kind of common sense and the cards really kind of tell you what to do. So it's Pretty cool. All right, how about some captains? Or you want to see captains or ships? Captains. Let's captains. See captains. All right. So for pirates, um, you will see on the back of your cards, uh, it'll it'll show you who's who um, in terms of what you're looking for. But uh, a couple examples of captains here. This is Captain Fiona. And uh, some of the anatomy of things that you'll see on these cards, uh, again, you're going to populate a die on here, and that's going to be your morale for your crew. Um, and then you have a grapple and a repel stat. So this will be for boarding maneuvers. Mm -hmm. um, it'll make things um, very interesting while uh, gameplay is going on, because if you're willing to get up close and personal, things can get kind of crazy. And then down at the bottom, you'll notice there is um, a crew ability. Um, each one of the captain cards comes with a crew ability, um, but there's also a way that you can change that up in this Correct. version, but I'll talk about that separately in a little while here. So I'll show you another, another captain card here. Look at that. Pretty awesome. And I said those stats are pretty cool because when you do a boarding action, you're going to hop right in front of uh the ship that you're trying to go up against and it's just a straight roll of the die to see uh who who will be right. uh winner or loser in that and whoever loses loses all their crew morale um and that makes it very challenging for you to play your gear cards right along the, the way gear card cost has to be that morale or higher correct correct so you might come up with a really dastardly plan and be quite proud of yourself and then realize that the last hit you took took your morale down and then you can't play it so the French have captains of their own here. And again, just gorgeous artwork, really kind of gets you into it. And you can tell the obvious difference between the French and the pirates, um, that grapple and repel strength. Mm -hmm. The French, it's repel, 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 and the pirates just get crazy on that grapple. Board. You don't want to have to get yep, in close uh, for the boarding actions. Um, another, another captain here. Very nice. Look at that. Pretty awesome. And you can tell also um, the, the crew tokens tell you which size ship that these captains right. go with. So not every ship works, uh, work, every captain works with every ship. And, you, you know, you probably could put them on there, but then you wouldn't you get, get those token, bonuses. Right. Correct. All right. So that was ships and captains. So let's take a look at the minis, right? So I'm going to show you, we'll, we'll go pirates in the order that we have here. So I'm going to move my wind vane off to the side. Um, the wind vane, it's important to note, um, does come with your game. And this piece will come into the game at the beginning in, in one direction. And there's very few ways that that changes. Mm -hmm. um, events, some event cards can change it. And some of your skill cards can allow you the opportunity to change the direction of the wind. And it's very important in how you're going to get your movement done across right. the board and what ships you choose to bring in exactly. to battle. Exactly, some ships, like the smaller sloops, run better against the wind because they're going to attack. Mm -hmm. And your larger ships run better with the wind, obviously, um, on a straight-on course or off mm -hmm. on a, an, an angle with the uh, wind to your stern. So it it's definitely plays into the tactics of the game. For sure. So For sure. All right, so... We'll, we'll go with pirates first here again. So this is an example of um, the biggest ships that the pirates have. This is considered a medium class um, for a frigate for the pirates. Now, really, really nice No, that they don't come They painted. don't come painted, no. This, this was yeah. special for us to be able to, to film Let's Play for you guys to see. So that looks pretty sweet. And then uh, their smalls, which would be the sloop. 
Really nice. I love uh, the difference that they ended up coming through on the, the bases for these guys. I don't know if, how close we can see the nice little detail around there, but they, they look really sharp. And then they, they do come one piece. So mm -hmm. when, when you get them, they're going to come one piece. They will be plastic. These are resin um, because it is a prototype that we're working with. So for the French, you have uh, the huge. And like I said, this is, a, this is a class ship that we don't see in the Pirates. And if you want to see um, kind of a comparison here, let me bring in a medium pirate ship. So they, they're, they're comparable, but their stats are different for sure. Yeah. Um, next up, it would be a medium frigate class for the French. Now these I find interesting because this is their medium. This medium is definitely smaller than the pirate's medium. So it kind of, it kind of offsets it a little bit. Yeah. We got to be a little fair, right? Just a little. It's just the type of ship that they, you know, try to simulate in the game. Mm -hmm. One medium for one Navy isn't necessarily a medium ship in another. Right. So. That's true. That's true. Um, and then again, a small for... Uh, the French, and this is essentially the same the same mm -hmm. ship that you see running with the pirate factions. All right, pretty awesome. So those are the things that are essentially the same. I guess we can talk about the skill cards a little bit also, um, something that remains kind of the same. Um, I'm going to drop just a couple of cards down here for you to be able to see. These are... Stand them up so we can see. These are the kinds of things that you're going to have available to you in your hand. Um, for during your turns. And this is what I was talking about is influenced by your cruise morale. Um, this is the number in the box is what you have to have available to you morale wise in order for you to be able to play that on a turn. But you'll see they give you different buffs, bonuses, allow you to do kind of little tricks um, to the other player, but um, really kind of changes things up for gameplay. And so both the pirates and the French have those available to them. Um, some things that are the same between the decks mm -hmm. and then little differences yeah, based upon play style. I mean, you know, there's going to be some that would be more appropriate for pirates and then there are some that are more appropriate for the out of the French Navy, in this case with this one, or there are expansions as well. So there's correct, going correct. to be other um, navies included in the Kickstarter. Correct. Yeah, you can actually get the South Sea Alliance, which we don't have here. And those ships are gorgeous. Yeah. So that has got your Asian flair to it. They, and the ships look totally different than the ships you have here. In the first Kickstarter, there was the Spanish Armada. Um, that was an expansion for that one, too. So all in all, if you got everything, you would end up with six, six different varieties of um, ships that you could game with. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that are different in this mm -hmm. one. So first of all, let's talk about forts. If I can find my little fort card here. This game comes with the addition of forts. Um, and this is, I think, a really fun extra dynamic yep, to the game. Because sure previously, um, it was just ship to ship, ship, to ship. Sink, sink the opponent, and, and that's how you win. This time, you're still going to be able to do that, but you are going to have a fort uh, represented by your side that it essentially functions as another vessel out on, on the water um, that has the ability to fire mm -hmm. and take fire. So now the game dynamics change to either sink all of your opponent's ships or destroy their fort, whichever thing happens first. Right, so, and then also with the forts... You oh, get a repair yes. option. That And so. that is so good. I never took advantage yeah. of that. You did. I did. Yeah, you definitely bought some time with that. So I think that is a great, a great addition to the game. Add a little variety there. Um, other things that are different. So I mentioned before, on your, on your captain cards, you automatically have crew tokens built into it. But um, this uh, volume of the game actually allows um, the addition of different token pieces um, so that you can actually choose different um, different dynamics to add to your game. Some of these are a little hard to read with the yellow, but um, so like plus one cannon damage. Um, same kind of thing. They still tell you which size ship, like this is a small ship, so you can't use them on all ships to get the bonus. Um, plus one grapple. The British are kind of difficult to read. Here we go. Here's plus one pivot. So these are all things that you can think about at the beginning of the game. If you're not really content, you know, either I'm a sucker for, oh, I love how this ship looks and that's the one that I want to play. And then I get to looking at what it, 
what its dynamics are. Right. I'm not crazy about it, or I'm starting to see what you're bringing in, and it's like, oh God, I'm going to get killed if I don't. Yeah, compensate. and you will see in the uh, Let's Play we did that I forgot that you could add on those tokens, and I just went with the standard ones in the cards, and it made things <laughs> difficult at times, shall we say. You couldn't keep track of which ship was which. Right? I, I think that was the least of your problems. Again, it's not that I couldn't keep track of the ship. <laughs> I just wanted to use whatever ship was at the best advantage and oh. pretend it was the other ship. Oh, I'm a pirate. That's what it is. All right, so we've got crew tokens. We talked about forts. Um, events. This version of the game has an event deck with it. So another action available to you before you take any other ship actions on your turn, you can discard one of your skill cards to draw an event card. They may be good things. They may be bad things. Um, but they, they're super fun, and especially when you think like things are going so badly for you and you're like, what do mm -hmm. I have to lose? Do an event card because you, I mean, it really could be a game changer. And it was and a it game was. changer. It really was. <laughs> it was. Um, so I have an example of some of the different things that we can get in the event cards here. So um, one says, uh, You happen upon a floating survivor from a shipwreck. So you can have plus one crew morale or repair one bow damage, which yeah. is pretty awesome. So there we go with that. Um, next thing, it actually introduces different elements that you're going to add to the board, which once they come into play, they remain permanent on the board yep. for the rest of your game. So you might get a fog token, place it anywhere on the sea tile, not currently occupied by anything, it's permanent, and um, it has pl uh, minus, plus two defense and minus two to cannon accuracy. So this is super fun because when you are getting pounded on by uh, an enemy ship and yeah. you can't get out of there you can you can stick one of these tokens down on top of the board in wherever you choose so you can put it between you and the other ship you know and automatically any when somebody has to move into that area mm -hmm. um, you're going to have that buff or bonus added to you. another one that you might get um, is a current you can place a current token anywhere that you want on the board, and this will essentially, when you end your turn on it, when you go to start your next turn, you'll have plus one to your movement. Yeah, which, so, again, which is nice, especially super, if you start receiving damage and your, and your uh, ship movement is reduced. Yes. That could definitely come into play. So, and then there's the current And that's token. the little token. Yeah, and so that's when, when you're counting out how far it's going to be mm -hmm. to get to something like your fort is just out of range. You can kind of pre-plan to what your next move is going to be and go, I know I'll end there. And so then on my next turn, I'll be able to get myself in close enough to be right. able to, to start firing. You might get a storm card. Um, so you place a storm token anywhere on the tile. And these are cool because these are larger. So I'll show you on here. Um, it is actually this big piece that takes up four hexes, and so different, different spaces that you move through will impact either crew morale or structure damage. So you really have to, how bad do you want to get through someplace? Right. You know, and again, these are the things that you can just really throw in the way of your opponent and make things interesting. Um, the other thing you can draw is shallows. So again, oh, we didn't have that one. No, that one, that one we never drew. Darn but it. so I know, yeah. Oh darn. Um, so this one, same, same thing. It's going to offer um, different levels of impact as you go, and it really can make areas impassable. And so when you know if you're trying to navigate in between two islands that are mapped out on the board, um, this can really muck up somebody's plan and make them have to take the long way around. Yeah. So pretty awesome last thing that you might find in this event pile, my favorite thing in this event pile, is a sea monster. No spoilers. AKA a Kraken. And what is not to love Release about a the Kraken? Kraken? If you are the person that draws an event and you draw this Kraken card, not only uh, do you get to have um, some craziness ensue on the board, but you get to control that Kraken for the remainder of the game like it's one of your ships. So uh, come on. That is pretty awesome, and uh, yeah, I can't I can't spoil, but you're just going to have to watch what happens with the Let's Play. But the Kraken is amazing, and here is the Kraken Mini. Come on, look at him again. Not painted uh, when you when you get your game, but he just looks pretty epic. 
and he can move um, under ships, yeah. which I think is cool. He can't move through islands or anything, of course. He has to follow those rules. But the fact that he can move under a ship, come up on the other side, these are all things that are super important when you start thinking about where areas of damage are getting on a ship. So if you've weakened one side of somebody's vessel, obviously they're going to try to turn it and give you the other side to offer some level of protection. But that bad boy can just... Yeah. Sneak it's, underneath and come up on the other side and, and make things pretty crazy. So this this is volume two. I mean, I we had such a great time when we played. And like I said, I just I love the fact that you can just really easily hop into this game. Um, the math is not complicated. The bookkeeping is super easy and clean. It's a lot of fun. It is. And this game here is truly what Kickstarter was designed yes, exactly, for. exactly, exactly. This is a one-dude operation. Yeah. Um, you know, he does this for, out of his home, and he's made a really quality product. Mm -hmm. You can reach right behind you. That's the demo this was copy. This the prototype. Oh, yeah. The other one's up there. But here's the Spanish Armada. So, I mean, you know, it's the second. He's definitely improved the game a lot. Um, he's made it even more dynamic. The strategy has expanded. It's a fun game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can play more than two people. Two to six players. Yeah. Two to six so, players I mean, you, for this. You know, you can have multiple, you know, navies. You know, you can have three on the French side and three on the pirate side. Or I imagine you could even do like the pirates and the French and the and the South Seas Navy. You right know. when you when you get a hold of those yeah. other factions, and you can choose how complicated or not that you want to make it be by the number of ships that you go to play. Obviously, the more ships you take, the longer game experience right. you're going to have. It takes usually up to ninety minutes, depending. Uh, we did an hour when we played Roughly, yeah. um, mm -hmm. with three ships, and so it just it just depends on what you want to bring to it. But just think of how. How big you can make your game space. Ooh, on the Kickstarter, we did not hit give one of these to show off. One of the upgrades that you can do is actually a um, neoprene game mat. Um, because this does play this does play on hexes like it is. Um, so as it is, the tiles on here uh, come in pieces. You can play it like this, but um, if you choose to get that mat, you can have a, a bigger game experience and not have that in there and still right. add all the bells and whistles to it. And uh, the the picture of the mat looks spectacular because the hexes are about as opaque as you can make them so, so that they're not the most visible thing on the mat. So you could use that for all kinds of things. Good stuff. It is. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can play it with, you know, your kids, family. Mm -hmm. It's it's a fast, easy game to learn. Um, it's not terribly complicated. The cards, everything's laid out nicely for you. The minis don't need any assembly. No, they're um, easy to go. So really, you don't even have to paint them if you don't want to. Obviously, they look much better painted, and it's not. And you're looking at. You have to do a little something. Now they were different colors, I believe, yes. in the in the in the box when you get them, which is awesome because so right out and of the plastic. gates, you can play it and be able to distinguish the difference because as I pointed out, um, some the ship types do look the same, you know, with the exception of going into like the huge, the sloops all look the same for whichever side you're playing. So um, at least you have that color exactly. distinguishment. So, um, yeah, it's really, really nice. Come on, if you love pirates and you love naval battles, this is, this is a game you just to give a try. All right, guys, let us know what you think in your comments below. Um, until then, we will see you again next time. See you later. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.